Now, the more I use Super Bass, the more that I'm impressed of just how powerful it is and just how many features there are that are really going to help you out uh, in order to build a very, very robust app. And a lot of these features simply do not exist in Firebase and many other database backends. And so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite features and functionality that I've discovered that are definitely going to help you out when you're building your apps. And I'm more than sure that by the end of the video, you're going to be using at least some of these features when building your apps, whether this is an app that you're planning to build in the future or an app that you're building right now. Now, before we get started, as always, all the resources and all the apps that I discuss and or build on this channel are available to view and or clone from my Patreon page. And you can learn more about our amazing Patreon community via the link in the description below the video. Now, the first thing that I wanna show you is a feature that will solve a problem that I'm sure you're gonna be dealing with pretty much all the time. If you're building any kind of a complex app with Superbase, this is something that you're gonna be using 100%. So here I have a very, very simple table with four columns. I have two built-in columns, ID and created ad, and I have two user-defined columns, name and product. Now in this situation, and this is going to happen all the time, you do not want to have more rows inserted with these values. So once I have James and Sony, I do not want to have multiple rows that have James and Sony. It's okay to have other rows with James here. It's okay to have other rows with Sony here, but I do not want to see this combination, James, Sony, ever again in this table. And so if I have multiple of these value combinations here, so multiple of these James and Sony, I may want to increment another value. So maybe I want to have a quantity value in order to increment this but regardless i do not want to have multiple of these combinations now you can take care of this on the front end right you can create all kinds of rules all kinds of conditions all kinds of things and you can certainly do that but it's a lot better to do it on the back end because if you do it here on the back end then regardless of what happens on the front end, regardless, you know, if your rules work or not, if you've tested it or not, you'll never be able to have multiple rows if you have this rule set here on the back end. So right now, if I do another row, so if I create another row and I do James and I put Sony, I will be able to create another record. OK, so here I am creating another record. But if I create this specific constraint on the table, I won't be able to do it. And the way that you create this constraint is you simply go to SQL editor and you can create this exact rule using the following SQL. So we're saying alter table, add a constraint. This is the name of the constraint. And we are constraining these two fields. In other words, a combination of these two fields. Now, you don't need to memorize any of this. You can simply go to ChatGPT and you can ask ChatGPT to do this. So here I'm saying create a unique constraint so that name and product must be unique. And then I'm pasting in my schema and I'm going to show you exactly where to get the schema. And this is the response that I'm getting. So then I simply paste it into this SQL uh, editor area here, execute this. And then when I execute this, it's telling me success, no rows return. And then when I go back to my table, I won't be able to add another row that has these two fields as a combination. So if I add another row, I can come in here and I can say, James, Sony, I will get an error. Okay, I will get an error. Duplicate key value violates unique constant. And I also created a Flutterflow app that demonstrates this functionality. So if we run this app, here we have a name and a product. So if I enter James, and let's say I am buying a Siemens product, okay, I click save. That has been saved. And if I go back to my table, as you can see, now we have a second record, James Siemens. But if I go back to my app and I enter James Sony, that's not going to go through. Because if I go back here, I still do not have another record, James Sony. And so with this feature, you can lock up pretty much any fields in your table or a combination of various fields. And that's going to be very, very useful if you're building any kind of a complex app that has multiple one to many and many to many relationships. You definitely want to do that. And in any complex app, you're bound to have a one to many and many to many relationships. 
So make sure you are using this feature because it's going to make your app a lot more robust. Another really awesome feature that I want to show you is the ability to create a specific rule with logic on a specific column. So here I have another table called A users and we have here the built-in fields and we also have an age field which is a numeric field. Now for the age field, I want to make sure that the age is between a certain range okay so in this case i want it to be between 18 and 65 and so if it fails that rule in other words is below 18 or over 65 i do not want to see that row being inserted in this table now let me show you what happens if i don't have this rule so i can come in here i can add a row and i can say well the age is 40. Okay, I can hit save here and that's going to successfully create the record. I can also add another record here and I can say the age is five. Okay, and that's going to also successfully create a record. And I can also create a rule on any of these columns that's going to limit the kind of data that you can insert into this table. And to do that, all I need to do is click here, edit column. And if I scroll down, we have a check constraint here. And so all I need to do is write age is greater than 18 and age is less than 65. Okay, once I have this, I'm going to hit save. And that's going to create this special constraint, this special rule and this specific field. And so now if I try to add another row, it's going to fail. And let's say I wanna add 100, that should fail. You see, new row for relation violates check constraint. And if I put something like two, that's going to fail as well. But I can put 35, for instance. If I hit save, that's going to work right here. And we can also test it out in our app here. So I have another screen here, demo two, enter age. Let's say I put 55, hit save. That should work. If I go back here, I have 55 right here. But if I put, let's say, 10, that should not work, right? If I go back here, 10 is not in this table, okay? So this is another way to create rules around the data in your tables. And obviously, you can create any of these checks, validations on your forms, uh, in your UI and you should definitely be doing that because when you create your table you probably already know what kind of data you want to see and what kind of data you want to block from appearing in this table and so once you have that information you can go out and you can create your rules create your constraints whether they're unique constraints or rules or anything else and then you can worry about your front end. Now, the next advanced feature I want to show you is also a type of rule, a type of constraint, but it works slightly differently. Now, here I have a very, very simple table with just one user-defined field called status. Now, status here is of type text. And so this means that when you're inserting data, status can be anything as long as it's text. Now, let's say I decide that I don't want status to be just anything. I want it to be only if it conforms to a list of previously defined statuses. So, for instance, when I'm creating these records, I want the status to be things like not started, things like processing, maybe pending, maybe uh, delivered may be finished or something like that i don't want status to be just about anything well thankfully you can also do this with superbase and so the first thing you need to do is you need to create a new data type and then define the values that are going to be possible for this data type and to do that you can head to database here then you can click on enumerated types and here you can create a new data type. So you want to click on create type. And here we're going to enter status. And here you can define the values that status must be equal to. So for instance, I can type not started. I can say pending. I can say processing. I can say in delivery. And I can say deliver. And I can obviously keep going and add new data types. Now, when I finish defining this type and I enter the values that I want this type to contain, I can click on create type here. And that's going to go ahead and create a new data type that's going to be limited to these values here. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go to table editor and I want to select the table that I was working with. So this was this A orders and I want to modify the field to this new data type. So if I click here, I can edit this column 
and this status is a text which means it could be just about anything so now i can click here and i can select my status here which is under this enumerated types okay i select status and now when i add new records this status must be one of these fields here so let's say i create a new record status is processing i hit save and now we have a new record here and of course this rule is going to work with any of the third party apps that are using this particular table so here i have a flutterflow demo where you can enter a status and it's going to create that record and so let's say i enter something like this and i hit save that should not create a new status and if we go back here you see there are no new statuses here but if i come back here and i enter deliver that should create a new record in in my table okay so if i go back here we see delivered okay and if i go back here and i enter in delivery that should hopefully create another record as well and here we see in delivery but if i enter something like not sure what to say that should obviously not be a status and if i go back here it's not here okay and so this is another way to create powerful rules and constraints around your data in your database and you definitely want to be doing this on the back end regardless if you are going to be doing it on the front end you should definitely be doing it on the front end so that the user can see what's happening but you should be always doing it on the back end as well now let's say there's some data on the internet that you want to interact with maybe you want to bring this data into your app you want to display it for your users or maybe you want to modify it you want to delete it you want to update it you want to do all kinds of interesting things now obviously there are many ways of doing it you can obviously you know build all kinds of flows uh, in your you know no code app you can use a third-party integration tool to do all that but what if i told you you can do all of that quickly and easily in superbase well you can superbase has something called extensions and these are essentially third-party apps that tightly integrate with superbase one of these extensions is called an http restful client and here it says the http extension allows you to call restful endpoints within Postgres. And so what this means is that if you're accessing any REST data using an API, and that means pretty much all the data because all the APIs are essentially REST endpoints, you will be able to easily access this data and modify it using a simple SQL query and then access this data in your table. So let me show you how this is done. So here I have a sample API endpoint. And what we're doing is we're displaying a list of objects and these objects are two do items, okay? So we have an object that has user ID, ID title completed, and then we had just have some random data for these two do items. So some two do items are not completed, some are completed as you can see and let's say you want to bring this data into your app well you can do that inside of your app by creating all kinds of api calls etc etc or you can quickly and easily do it right inside of superbase and all you need to do is go back to your superbase click on database find extensions and make sure you have this http extension enabled if you don't see it here then simply scroll down and you will be able to find it in this list of available extensions now once you have this extension enabled you can simply go to your sql editor and you can create a view that automatically pulls all of this data right into your superbase and so if you look at this extension if you scroll down they're giving you some sample views to get these to do items and here i have prepared a simple sql statement that pulls the data from a specific api endpoint and creates a view and so once you execute this query here you're gonna have a view that looks something like this so here i have an http view and that essentially displays the data from that specific endpoint now here we're not displaying all the to-do items we're only displaying one of them as you can see here we're using this api endpoint and we're displaying a to-do item with one as the record id so if i go back here and i put one here this is the record that we are getting right so we have user id id title and completed and in our view that we have created we are displaying things like status which is 200 that means it's okay and here i have created a specific column that displays a single value 
from here, right? So in this case, we have title here and we have title right here. Now, once you've created this view right here, you can easily pull this data in your app. So here I am back in Flutterflow and we have a demo where we are displaying all of this data so let me go ahead and run this app here and so here's the app and we can simply head over here and we are seeing those values that we saw right here now i can also easily create another column that's going to be displaying the status here so all i need to do is head over to definition copy this right here go to SQL editor and then what I can do is I can say create or replace view and I can simply add the new column here so this is going to be called I think completed and this is completed as completed right here and I can simply run this query and that's going to create a new field with the completed value right here success come back to our SQL editor, go back to our view. And guess what we see? We see a new field here called completed with false. And now I can go back to my app. I can refresh the schema here from Superbase, get schema. Yes, scroll down and I see my new view here with the completed field. Now I can go back here, click here and change this from title to completed, set completed right here. And then I can reload my app. And now I'm going to be seeing that new field in my table here and here we are seeing the completed field which is false in this case and false right here so this is another very very powerful super base feature that allows you to interact with third-party data right in your super base and in my view it's a lot easier to have all of this data here in super base and then looking at your views and making sure that all the data is correct and only then building a UI on top of this data instead of trying to figure out how to get all of this data when you're building your app. Now, the next feature I want to show you is truly amazing and it's definitely going to get a lot of you excited. And that is because I saved the very best for last. Now, what if I told you that you can bring external data into your Superbase database? So things like Firebase, things like Airtable, things like Stripe and many other things right into your Superbase. Well, you can easily do that right now. So if you head over to Superbase docs and you scroll down to a section called foreign data wrappers, you can read more about this amazing functionality. And so it says here, wrappers is an extension that provides integrations with external sources. So you can interact with third party data using SQL. Okay. And they give you a couple of examples. And right now it supports things like Airtable, AWS, BigQuery, ClickHouse, Firebase, Lockflare, and Stripe with more connectors being added in the future. So how exactly does this work? Well, let me show you how you can create a view that will pull in your Firebase information right into Superbase. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to head back to Superbase. You want to click on your database here and you want to click on extensions. Okay. In your extensions, make sure you have wrappers enabled here. If you do not have wrappers enabled, then it's probably going to be around here somewhere. Once you have it enabled here, you can click on wrappers here and you can create a new wrapper. Now I have a couple of wrappers here one to Airtable and one to Firebase, but we're gonna create a brand new wrapper. We're gonna select Firebase here and I'm gonna give it a name. So let's say this is a Firebase. And for the project ID, I can simply go to my Firebase console, click here, project settings. And here's my project ID. I can simply copy that, paste it in here. Now for the service account, all I need to do is go back to my Firebase console, click on service accounts and click on generate new private key. When I do that, a new key is generated and I automatically download it. Now, when the key has downloaded, you wanna open it and you wanna copy it, then go back to Superbase and simply paste it in here, okay? Next, you wanna click on add foreign table and here you're gonna have an option to select a target. The table will point you. So you have users, and a Firestore collection. So let's let's go with Firestore collection. And here you need to enter a table name that you're gonna be seeing here in Superbase that's going to reflect the data in Firebase. And so let's say we're gonna call it Firebase products. And for the object, this is going to be your collection 
in Firebase, right? So if I go back in Firebase here and I click on Firestore database, I have a bunch of collections. Let's say we want to display products here, okay? So this is my products collection. There are a bunch of documents here, like 20 something documents. And so you can simply go back here and type Firestore forward slash products. Next, you want to select the columns that are going to be added to your table. We can just select all of them by default. That is absolutely fine. Click save. And now you have your settings here configured. Okay. You can click save here. And now we have configured a new wrapper. So now we have a couple of wrappers and we should have a new table here, right? So if we come by here, we have a new table called Firebase products. So if I click here, I should see the data from Firebase products collection. In this case, this is exactly what I'm seeing, right? So I have the name here. I have created that. I have updated that. And here I have all the attributes. So if I select this, I'm seeing all the attributes, right? All the data for that specific record. So I have all the data for all the records, right? If I come back here, it says here type is SD22, a lively outdoor cafe. And if I go back here, this is this record right here. We have the image URL price. And so at this point, we have our Firebase collection successfully pulled into a Superbase view as a foreign table. And so obviously, once you have your data here, it's very, very trivial to go out and create the right views in your no code app. With Flutterflow, you can actually create a data type that's going to contain all of these values in this specific collection here. And that way you can have one-to-one -one mapping uh, with the data that we're seeing here and the data in your Firebase Firestore. And then you can do all kinds of interesting things in your no-code apps. You can display this data pretty much any way that you want. And if the data changes, the changes are going to be reflected here as well. And so this is a very, very powerful feature with tons and tons of potential. Now, if you guys are thinking to yourself, I really, really like these features and I'm looking to implement this functionality in my Flutterflow apps. Well, if that's the case, then you definitely want to join our amazing Patreon community because when you join our incredible Patreon community, you're going to get access to everything that I talked about in this video, which means you're going to get access to that Flutterflow app that I showed you, that proof of concept app. You'll be able to view and or clone it. I'll also make available my chat GPT conversation so you'll know exactly what to do if you get stuck. But don't forget, when you join our amazing Patreon community, you're going to get access to all the apps that I talked about on this channel all the apps, all the resources, you'll be able to view them on your computer. You'll also be able to clone them so that you can modify them, you can adjust them, you can change them around, or you can just take something that you like there and leverage it in an app that you're building right now or an app that you're planning to build in the future. And I've built over 150 apps on this channel that means i've built all kinds of apps so regardless what kind of issue you are dealing with what kind of app that you're trying to build what kind of problem you're trying to solve i have probably done it before so there's no need to reinvent the wheel and so if you're looking to level up your no code knowledge you're looking to build a business you're looking to build apps maybe for your family for customers or maybe for yourself or maybe you're looking to pick up a new skill then joining our amazing Patreon community is the right choice. And you can learn more about our rapidly growing and amazing community via the link in the description of the video. And so if all of this sounds like something that's going to provide you with some level of value, then I sincerely hope to see you inside of our amazing community. Now, if you want to see more Superbase videos, I'm going to be linking a playlist right there. And so if you're interested in building apps with Superbase, definitely check out some of the videos linked above.